Some years before the Dominican order had been founded, a monk had a vision. And later on, he described when he first met the Dominicans that same vision. And he said, during the time that I was caught up in rapture, I saw Our Lady, Mary, the Mother of God, during those three days and nights upon bended knee with clasped hands, pleading with her son on the behalf of mankind and beseeching him to forbear yet a while that the world might repent. But during all that time, he spoke never a word, but at length upon the third day he yielded and made answer. My own mother, what can I do? Or what ought I do further for the race of men? I sent them patriarchs for their salvation, and for a brief space of time they gave ear to them. I sent prophets, and for a while they did penance. After that, I myself went unto them, and I gave them apostles, but they crucified me, and them they killed. I have since sent them martyrs, confessors, doctors, and many more. Yet despite their toil, the world has not amended. Nevertheless, at your prayer, I will send unto them preachers and men of truth, through whom the world shall be enlightened and reclaimed. If it proves good, then it is well, but if not, there remains no further remedy. But I myself will come in judgment and be avenged upon them. Eight hundred years later, this vision of this monk, lost to history, is fulfilled in the church. It's fulfilled in your midst. That that order continues. That this is just one of many stories. It's very similar in the same way, the same vein, of visions of, of monks and nuns and lay mystics that saw, for, foresaw the coming of the Dominican order. Because the work of that order is necessary. The work to preach the truth and to get it, dedicate themselves to that one thing, the teaching mission of Jesus Christ to save the world, to save souls from being lost to damnation, to being lost in sin. We always trust in the mercy of God, but the teachings of Jesus convey to us always that urgency to spread the gospel. Today we have this story in the story in the Dominican rite of this bread. Who will feed them? Who will feed them? And it signifies two things. One, of course, is the Eucharist itself. Who will feed them, if not the priests of the church? But also, who will feed them the Word? That Word, that first bread, and the Word of God that prepares us, opens our hearts, our minds, our souls to receive the very body and blood of Christ. And we need conversion if we are to receive Him worthily. We need freedom so that we might truly be free like God, like the Lord hopes us to be. Who will feed them? The laborers, or the harvest is great, but the laborers are few. Eternal life is assured only through Jesus Christ. And this primary of the work, this primary work of the church continues through the teaching and the proclamation of the truth of our faith. And to this mission alone, the Dominican order is dedicated. There are so many other good charisms to follow Christ in poverty, to serve the poor, to heal the sick, to teach children. But the Dominican order is dedicated to the very mission of the church itself. A couple of years ago, Father Francis Lee had given an account, as many pastors do, of the church, of the parish. Our prior provincial in Oakland asked all of the directors and pastors if we would give an account, a one-time account, of our province, of which this church is an important part. And so, our province, the province of the most holy name of Jesus, is one of 82 Dominican provinces and vicariates in the world. And we're in many more countries, including difficult places to minister right now, like Pakistan, Iraq, China. This particular province of the holy name of Jesus was founded 165 years ago by Spanish friars. And our priests have always been dedicated to the missionary work of these 10 western states, and Hawaii and Alaska are in our province. And we've done amazing things 
in that history of uh, more than 16 decades. We provided the first Archbishop of San Francisco. We celebrated the first Mass ever in Sacramento. We evangelized much of Northern California, though that might need to happen again. In the 19th century, we rode on horseback among the native people still present in Southern California. We rode horseback and visited and celebrated Mass in Utah, Arizona, Idaho, establishing missions there. We built a mission in the jungles of Chiapas, Mexico. We built hospitals, as I mentioned in another homily about a year ago, built hospitals and schools in a leper colony in the Philippines. And we established a school dedicated to the teachings of St. Thomas in Berkeley, California, of all places. And that still is going today. That's still very active, educating our priests, other priests, other sisters and religious and lay people as well who want to serve the church. Besides that, today we have ten parishes and eight collegiate campus ministries. And the province says we touch the lives of 40,000 families. And I can't imagine it's that small, given the nature of our parishes and, and the people who come through all the time and sometimes. We also have two province-wide shrines, one the, the St. Jude Shrine in San Francisco, where many devotees come every day. And also this one, a lot of people don't know, this is the shrine of the Holy Rosary. Right here, this shrine, the statue indicates that we are the shrine for the confraternity of the Holy Rosary, which has tens of thousands of members at least, dedicated to praying together with and for the friars, with and for each other in the confraternity. We, in this province, we have given many to, um, to retreat work and to media. We have preachers, retreat leaders, the people, priors who contribute to Sacred Heart Radio, EWTN, uh, writing for the Catholic Register, Catholic Answers, teaching and other radio programs. We have members of the province, probably per capita, we have the most professors in the order that, have, that work internationally. We do staff our school in Berkeley, but we contribute professors, Dominican priests, to Rome, the Angelicum, to Providence College in Rhode Island, the Ecole Biblique in Jerusalem, Freiburg, Louvain, and others. We run international missions still in Mexico, Guatemala, Lithuania. And currently, the order led by our provincial is under, or the, the province rather, led by our provincial is in a time of great renewal and reform. We're looking to strengthen the numbers of friars in our community so we can better serve the people but also live a properly consecrated religious life. We, in these times especially, the relativistic spirit of the world has only urged us on to, to, with greater zeal for preaching and proclaiming the truth, that urgency of the gospel is now. The loss of Catholic roots and the Church prompt us then to renewal and reverent Orthodox liturgy in its various forms, and really incorporating the spirit of Pope Benedict to learn from new and old and go forward with that which is good from both. Well, part of that is our celebration of the Dominican Rite, which recently we've been celebrating in five different churches, um, including now our House of Studies, our seminary in Oakland. Now, the work of the order is the work of the church, and as such, the Dominican, Dominican work in spirituality is by nature communal. And that not only is that active and true within the, the priories, within the province, but it's something that we've always been engaged with the world. We're kind of the first, one of the first to establish monasteries in urban areas. We still regard ourselves as contemplative, monastic in a sense. But here we are, active, alive, and present in the world. And so there's a collaboration. As Pope Benedict grew from the gospel and spoke about how the church should operate, that we are co-workers in truth, and that we see that in the order that there are so many associated with the order, including those we serve. It's not a service one way, but it's a service together for that proclamation of the gospel, the sanctification of the world. We all participate in the mission of the order. We all participate in the mission of the Catholic Church to preach and to proclaim the truth of Jesus Christ. Now, clearly in a spiritual way, but also a practical way, we friars cannot accomplish our spiritual works of mercy without your help. The Dominicans are a mendicant order. 
which means we beg for what we need. This is how we beg today, right here. It used to be that the friars would go door to door begging for bread and what they needed. The Holy See, in the first decade of our order, intervened and said, please, dedicate yourself to study and to preaching. Let the people provide in a different way for this great ministry. Focus on these things. And so we do. Unlike monasteries that make fruitcake or vestments of cheese, you know, and you don't want Father Buckley and I making fruitcake or, or fudge. And I'm not sure it would sell. What do you want us doing? Dedicated to study, to prayer, and to preaching the Word of God. And for this, we rely totally on the generosity and, and gifts of others who share their time as co-workers in the truth, their commitment, and, and their donations. We rely totally on this and God's providence, which in fact is the motto of our province, that God provides. This generosity of what you give of yourself, whether it's donation and prayer or whatever it is, strengthens the order, this parish, strengthens the church. And you, as we see very much in our hearts, and we pray for this, we have masses for our benefactors and each eat at least once a week for the people of our ministries. And you are part of that. You are part of our province. And your, our work, our success, our fidelity, the spiritual benefits of the order are yours. All that we have is yours. As a religious order, when we take the other collections for retired religious or for seminarians, it doesn't benefit us. We take this because we serve the local archdiocese as well. But that money does not support Father Duffner, Father Buckley, does not support our seminarians. So we, that's why we take up once a year in, in, in October. This is a special collection for this, once a year in October, for these needs, especially for our students, to support the students in their study of Thomas Aquinas and the doctrine of the Catholic Church. So in that spirit, I come before you and I ask you humbly, humbly, most humbly, that you continue this work, that you continue to do what you're doing and to help us in prayer and in generosity to continue to minister here in Portland, around the Western United States, and around the world. Because our, not just the order, but like I said, our friars in this province minister around the world. And these are, this mission, or this work with us, is accomplished in three ways. One, pray. Pray. Unite yourself with us in prayer. That, this is a Dominican tradition above all. Pius V asked the whole church to pray the rosary for peace in the 16th century, and it worked. So pray. Pray for more labors for the harvest. Pray that we hear and are converted by the word of God. We are free according to his grace, the gift of his grace. Prayer is the greatest support in preaching the gospel. And this is what our cloister nuns are dedicated to. We have teaching nuns and ones who work at nurses too, sisters. But the cloister nuns are dedicated for the preaching of the friars and for the hearts of all believers that they might open to that word. Prayer, again, the greatest support. Two, if you are an intelligent, single, young Catholic man, consider joining us. Father Stephen's about to go to Oakland and be vocation director to do this job. It's a great life of serving the church as an apostolic missionary. It's a, it's a life of joy and uh, that gives great benefits of, of happiness and satisfaction in serving God in this way. And number three, by offering a gift for the province in the Mission West campaign. Now, each of our ministries was asked to donate a certain amount of money. We're assessed, if you will, a certain amount of money. And seven of our parishes already reached that goal. And we were assessed to about $248,000. And before I came here, you know, I asked others. I asked some of, some of our parishioners, and, and they already donated 70% of that, $175,000, before I even came and asked you today. So that only leaves 30%. That leaves 73000 left. The people of Holy Rosary are known by the province, in fact, to be very generous in this regard. 
and we thank you for that. We thank you, and thank you especially, especially if you're here present now. I only see about halfway back, so excuse me. But any of you who are present here that have given already, and for all of you who have given so much over the years in donating various things, including monetary gifts, but also time and work and prayer. So thank you, and, and you're, you're united with us in that. So, like I said, it's a little complicated Latin Mass, but we'll take a first collection for the parish, and in your pews you'll find the campaign envelope, and we'll take the second collection right away. I don't think there's another good way to do that, and so that's my thought. And so I invite you to fill out an envelope, or you may take it home and bring it back next week. We'll, we'll just, it'll just be this two weeks that so will remind us that, about this if you choose to mail a gift directly to the province, do put Holy Rosary Parish on it, Portland. And Holy Rosary Portland, make sure to put that so that we get that credit and they know that together that it's, it's we who have given this and it'll be counted towards our parish contribution. Okay, so what's, the, what's this collection support? It supports and will train the formation of Orthodox and faithful Dominicans to be future priests, of which we have about 20 or so, 25, I think, in formation right now. We will give the world great preachers to defend and spread the truth of the faith. It will fund the education of gifted Catholic scholars and preachers, teachers educated in Thomas Aquinas to provide future professors for the church to educate future Dominicans and other seminarians. It will help complete the, financial, the financing of our Dominican School of Philosophy and Theology, again dedicated to the teaching of Thomas Aquinas in Berkeley, California. It will help care for our elderly and infirm friars who are retired but still serve the church so faithfully. We have three examples here, Father Buckley, Father Pascal, Father Duffner, who still works at the Rosary Center almost every day. He's 100 years old next month and his 75th anniversary to the ordination of the priesthood is in December. And above all, it will help us to continue our critical mission to preach and teach for the salvation of souls. So on behalf of all of us, from Father Duffner to the youngest novices, we thank you. You know, there is an urgency. And it's not the urgency of one that is a wrathful God, but one is merciful. God has always, in the in scriptures, especially in the Gospels, and in the teaching of St. Paul, spoken about this urgency, that there's an urgency that there are those who do not know Christ, there are those who do not know freedom. The freedom of the gift of God's grace. And it's more urgent now than it was when Christ was preaching in Galilee and in Judea. It's more urgent than it was when we were founded in 1216. More urgent than in 1850 when this province was established. Join us. Be one with us in this urgent need to proclaim the truth of Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.